Meshtastic versus Meshcore. Seems like whenever I make a video on Meshtastic, there's always multiple comments saying to check out Meshcore and how Meshcore is better. But is Meshcore actually better than Meshtastic? Are people really putting all the time and effort to switch their meshes to Meshcore? To find out, I decided it was finally time to see what all the fuss is about and luckily Meshcore runs on a lot of the same hardware so flashing it to my growing collection of lore radios was simple enough. But there's one big problem. I'm currently the only Meshcore user in my area. Everyone else is on Meshtastic. Now sure I could just do a basic comparison video showing the differences between the apps, firmware, configuration, and all that, but I wanted to do something more. Not only to give my subscribers and viewers the best possible video comparison between the two, but I'm also really curious myself as well. To do that, I figured it would be best to get some real-world data by reaching out to some Mesh communities that have experience with both Meshtastic and Meshcore. Now, I'm also aware due to human nature that this whole Meshcore versus Meshtastic can be a polarizing topic with people choosing to either be Team Meshtastic or Team Meshcore. So I've reached out to multiple meshes across the U.S. to get the broadest possible sampling. Now there's an awesome tool online called the Meshcore Analyzer, and using this tool we can see that there's currently three main areas here in the U.S. using Meshcore. And that's Boston, Southern California, and the Pacific Northwest. Since Meshtastic has been around longer and Meshcore is newer, active Meshcore meshes likely have experience with both. Each area has a Discord server, so I sent them all the same message explaining that I'm in Tennessee where we only have Meshtastic, and I asked for their experiences with both platforms. So the first stop is the Boston area mesh. The first user to respond with their experience wished to remain anonymous, but mentioned that they've found good results with Meshcore's approach to routing, and that group messaging is very usable even with a high number of hops. Another member who also wished to remain anonymous responded with their experience. Sure, we of course started with Meshtastic like everyone else, it was fun to see all the nodes populate on the map, but everyone quickly realized that they couldn't really message people, even beyond two hops. A lot of people accept that this was a limitation of the hardware and just what we need to expect. And this matches pretty close to what my experience has been with Meshtastic. Messaging has been pretty hit or miss, and I just accepted that it was a limitation of the hardware and the 900 megahertz ISM band. This user went on to say, I wasn't really happy with that, so I began digging and found out about Meshcore. I started telling people to switch, and eventually, Redacted User did, which led to the growth of our Meshcore community. We quickly saw an incredible difference in message delivery. I'm currently 30 to 40 miles away from Boston and able to reliably communicate with anyone on the Mesh. My messages up here regularly travel five to six hops, no issue. It's a night and day difference. So much so that we're even bridging states for the fun of it. We're merging with New York soon and have Connecticut and Rhode Island in our plans. Meshcore makes this possible. The first user also added this comment. I will say that the firmware and software for Meshcore is still maturing compared to Meshtastic, but the underlying way that the routing works makes it a night and day difference. Building out a repeater feels like a very tangible expansion of the entire mesh. Like Redacted User said, when you expand coverage further, it means that folks who can connect to the repeater are now connected to the entire mesh. It kind of just works when it's set up. The next largest mesh core community here in the U.S. is West Coast Mesh, which covers the Southern California area around Los Angeles and San Diego, where they have a rapidly growing mesh community. The first user to respond wished to remain anonymous, but had the following comments stating that, they definitely have different use cases, and that at least half the members there are Meshtastic converts. Shortly after that, another West Coast Mesh member who also wished to remain anonymous had this to say. Yeah, pretty long time Meshtastic user here and still an enthusiast of the platform. I was seeing my hops burn up, not able to leave my general neighborhood. I was also struggling with the default long fast and even medium slow frequencies in Southern California, with larger packets and longer lower chirps colliding with a very active 900 megahertz ISM band. The Meshcore protocol with smaller packets, less chatter overall, and quicker lower defaults 
seem to deal with those issues in a way that makes it feel like messaging just works. It's far from perfect, and as we scale here, we will absolutely find its limits. So it's not to say that MeshCore is better, but I would say right now it's offering insight into what may be more performant for chat-specific use cases, especially in urban areas. Then the first user also added, pretty much MeshCore is less ad hoc and relies more on established locations and repeaters, but however, it's much more robust when dealing with a large user count spread in a large area. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned constantly getting comments on my Meshtastic videos recommending that I check out MeshCore. One of those commenters happens to be a member of the West Coast Mesh community. So I was an ex Meshtastic user and my messages just weren't getting out due to congestion and I wanted to use Meshtastic for off-grid communications with my daughters. Sadly, it just wasn't working out with Meshtastic, so I switched to MeshCore and with the install of the Crestliner repeater, I have no issues when sending messages to and from. It's really grown in this area, and I can remember when there were maybe three repeaters, and now look at it. The first user also added these comments in response. Meshtastic became too clogged, and although it's great in a localized fashion, beyond 30 users, it becomes too ungainly. MeshCore's stability has also allowed us to really focus on hardware, firmware, and other development, along with build combinations, deployments, etc. It has been a valiant community effort in a short period of time. Next up, I reached out to the largest mesh core network here in the U.S. The Seattle area mesh, which stretches from Vancouver, British Columbia, down to Eugene, Oregon. This has two Discord servers due to its size, Puget Mesh and Cascadia Mesh. The first response came from AWOL on the Cascadia Mesh server. Almost hard to describe. My experience with Meshtastic was me and my buddies spinning up nodes and being completely unable to talk despite being a few miles from each other. The poor direct message pathing and bad flood algorithm made our dense mesh unusable. So we went hard into MeshCore late last year when there were zero MeshCore repeaters in the area. Managed to make a mesh in West Portland and haven't looked back. Messaging is near perfect. Now we have a mesh stretching from Eugene, Oregon to Vancouver. Shortly after that, another Cascadia Mesh member named Brian added his own experience. Mesh core routes are configurable and therefore somewhat deterministic and traceable. To me, that means that I can know or configure my route so that I can control the path of arrival of the packet to the recipient and it's not limited to seven hops. Meshtastic seven hop limit means the packet might make it to the recipient across town and the response might not make it back. However, if I went camping away from service with friends, I would prefer Meshtastic as direct messages are handled without the need for installing an infrastructure repeater as they can't route directly through the companion nodes in the mesh. They both have strengths, but I'm choosing the one that actually works. And when it doesn't, I have the route management tools to correct it and the diagnostic tools to understand it. I also heard from a member of the Puget Mesh Discord server named Sizian. Meshtastic for us was barely functional despite having hundreds of nodes showing up on the list. From the day where we deployed a good repeater, MeshCore has been very usable and reliable and growing at a strong pace. We've essentially have never been able to hold a conversation on Meshtastic. On MeshCore, there's constant conversations going across the public channel. Meshtastic's main failure in my eyes is the managed flood approach. It all but assures that packets will black hole somewhere. Now the approach to routing is an important difference between the platforms that we should go into. Meshtastic uses what they call managed flood routing, where nodes wait to hear if others are repeating the message, prioritize distant nodes based on signal strength, and give router and repeater roles priority. Now this all sounds good on paper, and in a perfect world, it's probably better. But in the real world, there's many variables that affect this method of routing. And as Sizian mentioned, it creates black holes where packets just disappear. The system just doesn't scale well across large geographic areas. MeshCore, on the other hand, takes a simple approach, pure flood routing. MeshCore repeaters don't do all of these attempts to manage anything. If they hear something, they just rebroadcast it. Now it is a noisier approach, but messages get through. Every mesh I talked to pretty much said the same thing. For messaging across a large area, MeshCore just works. 
Now, Uncle Lit, who's a member of the massive Seattle Mesh, provided me with remote access to a Windows virtual machine with the Mesh Core Windows client loaded on it so I could see their Mesh in action. I watched actual successful conversations happening, something that's been very hit or miss in my experience with Meshtastic here in Tennessee. I explored the node map, ran multi-hop traces from repeaters in the area, and even sent my own messages into the Mesh. The Cascadia Mesh runs a monitoring system on their Discord server, and N0EJ tracked my messages hitting their McMinnville, Oregon monitor, which is 170 miles away from Seattle, which is where my meshes were originating from. So from talking to the various people on these meshes, the general consensus seems to be that MeshCore works much better for sending messages back and forth in a large mesh spanning an urban or large geographical area. And MeshTastic works better for small mobile groups since every node rebroadcasts. This is also backed up in a great write-up done by another mesh community in Austin, Texas called Austin Mesh where they have a detailed comparison of Meshtastic and Meshcore. I'll leave a link to this page in the video description for you to check out. Now, while Austin Mesh is still early in their Meshcore deployment, they are rapidly growing. And since they had such a great write-up, I decided to check in with them as well to get their thoughts and experience. A member named Nick responded with the following. My experience with Meshcore has been very positive. I was an early skeptic turned advocate Having been at this a long time, it seems as stable or more with long links than Meshtastic Longfast, with much faster symbol rates. It prioritizes messaging over telemetry. The app has parity across devices and a bunch of awesome features built into the client side of the app and firmware protocol that makes testing and troubleshooting much easier than Meshtastic. Another member named Captain had this to say. Meshtastic will appeal to new users that want to see something right away. Meshcore will appeal to users who just want to talk to their buddy over the mesh, and it's been spotty with Meshtastic. Meshtastic still probably makes the most sense for small ad hoc networks. Meshcore makes more sense for established networks. Captain also shared an earlier message from Astro Bob in Omaha, Nebraska, who had reached out to them also asking about their experience with Meshcore and mentioned that he's been having positive results as well. When I reached out to him to get his permission to share a screenshot, he provided an update saying that their tests in Omaha have been very successful. So we've heard from Boston, Southern California, the Pacific Northwest, Austin, and now Omaha, and the consensus is pretty clear that MeshCore works better for large-scale deployments. Now, I couldn't talk to every mesh out there for this video, of course, but if you have experience with both platforms, please be sure to share it in the comments below. I do want to say thank you to all the great people who responded to me at the various different meshes. I'll have a section in the video description below with links to their Discord servers, along with their websites and any other info that they wanted me to pass along. They're all a great resource if you're looking into getting into MeshCore, and I'm sure they're happy to provide their experiences and answer any questions you may have. So will I be ditching Meshtastic and making the switch to MeshCore? Well, not entirely. I'll definitely keep using Meshtastic for mobile situations like we discussed earlier. But for the home-to-home off-grid communication use case that I originally looked to Meshtastic for, I'll absolutely be switching. And this is where I need your help. Right now, our part of Tennessee has zero MeshCore coverage, which means you have the chance to be one of the first operators shaping the MeshCore network here. We need repeater sites, volunteers, early adopters, especially in the area stretching from Chattanooga to Knoxville. With your help, we can build a larger, stronger, and more reliable mesh core network, just like the other meshes I reached out to. To coordinate everything, we've set up the 10 mesh channel on our Discord and a 10 mesh group on Telegram. I'll have the links to both in the video description below or you can scan the QR codes you see on the screen if you're watching on a TV. And if you're not a Discord or Telegram user, no worries, there's also a email link and QR code you can use to get in touch via email as well. So be sure to reach out and let's build this mesh together. But that'll do it for this video and we're just getting started with MeshCore, so make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on what's coming next. If this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with others in your area. 
Also, don't forget to check out the links from the great meshes I've reached out to in the video description below. Thank you all and have a good one.